parts are an essential element of any Kentico website. They are the primary way that developers deploy new application features and content editors, authors, and publishers interact and view content on your website. Web parts are the basic building blocks of page templates and are used to modify, view, and control page appearance directly from a browser. Technically, they are ASP.NET controls that are added to a Kentico CMS web part zone. Within Kentico, web parts are designed to cover a wide range of user experience and company needs. To deliver this, there are three basic implementations of web parts. The first is ASP.NET user controls. As a Microsoft.NET based application, Kentico allows any ASP.NET user control to be hosted on a Kentico page. This allows developers to leverage their existing ASP.NET user controls within the Kentico portal environment. The second is Kentico Web Parts. Kentico Web Parts are user controls that have inherited the Kentico API. For developers, a web part is a web user control, or ASCX, that inherits from the CMS Abstract Web Part class. This allows developers to reuse and extend their user controls to include the Kentico API. For content editors, authors, and publishers, there are over 400 web parts available for immediate use. They include site fundamentals like content display and more advanced features like integration with social channels like Facebook and Twitter. The third is Kentico CMS widgets. Widgets are extended web parts that enable page personalization for end users. Widgets allow site users and content managers to edit the structure of live pages. Any web part can become a widget by exposing at least one web part property. Web user controls are a common design technique for ASP.NET applications because you can use the same programming technique for writing web form pages. You can create web user controls when you need to create reusable pieces of a user interface that will be used throughout the entire application. A user control can contain HTML server controls and event handling logic, like a compile control. It can expose properties that host web form pages that you can set. The steps to create a user control are very similar to those for creating a web form page. You design the UI visually by arranging ASP.NET server controls, HTMLs, and static text on the design surface, binding to data and writing code to handle events raised by controls. Like a web form page, a user control can handle page processing events such as page load. We're going to create a simple user control and then show how this can be registered and finally displayed on your Kentico site. Within my Visual Studio application, I'm going to open up the CMS Web Parts directory. Within the CMS Web Parts directory, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder My Web Parts. Within the My Web Parts folder, I'm going to right click, I'm going to select Add and Add a New Item. I'm going to add a web user control that I'm going to call Hello World.ASCX. We'll go ahead and select Add. Within our source, the first thing we want to do is enter the full path to our code behind file. I'm going to replace the hello world.ascx.cs with the path starting from the top of our solution. We're going to go ahead and add some markup for a button and a label. I'm going to go ahead and save everything, and then I'm going to flip over to my design surface. Within my design surface, I'm going to double click on my button, and within the button one click event, I'm going to add the code that will go ahead and set the date time into the label property that I've set when I click the button and then go ahead and make the label visible. The next thing I want to do is to go ahead and add in some using statements for the part of the Kentico API that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use CMS dot 
portal controls and then I'm going to use cms.helpers. Once that's done, I want to go ahead and change my partial class to inherit instead of from system.web.ui.userControl to inherit from the CMS abstract web part. And last in our page load event, let's go ahead and add in uh, a button text set that will go ahead and provide the label for our button text. When that's all set, let's go ahead and save everything. At this point, the web part source files are actually now ready to use. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and build our application. And once it's built, go into Kentico and actually register our web part. So let's go ahead and hit Control F5 to get our application started. Now that our application's built, let's log into the administration interface. Within the administration interface, let's go into the web parts application. Within the web parts application, we're going to first create a new category, and then we're going to register our web part underneath that. So I'm going to select new category. Within the display name, I'm going to specify my web parts. Then I'll go ahead and select save. Now that I've created my category, within my category, we're going to create a new web part. We're going to name the new web part, Hello World. Now we're going to enter our file path. And as you remember, within Visual Studio, we created the My Web Parts directory. And then we created our user control in, called Hello World underneath that. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the Generate the Code files as the web part source files already exist, so there's no reason to generate them. We're going to go ahead and click Save. Now that we've created, let's pop over to our Properties. Within our Properties, we're going to create a new field. We're going to give our field name button text. We're going to make the field type text. We're going to make our field size 100. We're going to set our field caption to be button text. And then our form control, we're going to leave as text box. Now that that's done, we're going to click Save. What we've done now is we've registered the user control within Kentico, and we've created the web part. Next, let's go ahead and add an instance of this web part to a page. So I'm going to select our Pages application. Within our pages, we'll go ahead and select our home page. We'll select our design tab. And then within our main zone, I'm going to select add a new web part. Within our web parts list, we have my web parts. And underneath my web parts, we have our hello world web part. Within our web part properties, while I didn't actually add any specific properties, I was given a variety of them as part of bringing it in as a Kentico part. I'm going to go ahead and set our button text to show the time, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that that's done, you'll notice that at the bottom I have my Hello World web part, which has been added into this specific zone. And with that, I can go ahead and select Preview to see what it would look like on the live site. As I click down, you'll notice that I have my Show the Time button. And when I click that, I end up getting the current date and time. So this is an example of adding a very basic user control into Kentico and then being able to leverage it as a web part. While there are many instances where we will want to build our own web parts, Kentico ships with well over 400 web parts available out of the box and many more available through our partners and marketplace. Adding web parts to your application is a very simple process. Let's go ahead and log into our administration interface. Within administration interface, we're going to select our pages application. Within pages, we'll select our home page and then our design tab. First thing you want to realize is that you add web parts into web part zones. These are the yellow lines that you're seeing here. The blue lines are actually at the top 
of your specific web parts. You'll notice if we look at our main zone down here, we have our main zone, which is our web part zone, as well as a set of web parts that exist underneath that, like content text. If I select the menu option, I can go ahead and add a new web part. Within our select web part, let's go ahead and add in news and then our latest news web part. We'll hit select, and this brings me to our configuration screen. This is where I can set specific properties around display or where I actually want this web part to pull its feed, which is the latest news articles. I'm just going to go ahead and select OK. Now that I've done that, within our main zone, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have our latest news web part. Let's go ahead and select our services page. One of the really nice features of web parts is that they can be moved between zones. So for example, if I wanted to move our description text over to our left zone, we could go ahead and do that. So this gives us the capability of being able to restructure our pages fairly easily using drag and drop. The other thing is, while not everyone will need access to the administration interface, I can also go out to our live site and if I'm logged in to the system, as you'll see here once I select our home page, I have global administrator across the top. I also have the ability to edit the page. This is called live site editing. So just like I went ahead and I was able to edit items or add web parts, I can do this directly through the live site interface without having to log into our administration interface. This was a simple example of how you can actually use web parts within your Kentico installation. Widgets introduce support for the personalization of pages. This enhancement to web parts allows users and editors to modify the structure of page templates. This personalization is automatically saved within the system and can be invoked from the live site by authorized users or through the administration desk. From a designer's point of view, widgets, like web parts, are basic building blocks of page templates. Widgets are placed on widget zones, which are simply extended web part zone. As an example, as you can see on your home page, you'll notice that we have two different zones. We have our left zone, which has the word editor in front of it, which will define the type of widget zone that it is, and then our main zone, which is a basic web part zone. Now that we've looked at the basic differences, let's go ahead and create a new page with a widget zone. I'm going to select our top level. I'm going to select a new page menu item. Within this page, I'm going to create a page name called widget. I'm going to create a blank page. I'm going to create a blank page with layout. I'm going to select the simple page template. And then I'm going to go ahead and select Save. Now that the page is created, let's go over to our Design tab. And you'll notice that this page has a single zone. And as we saw, this is a web part zone. I'm going to go ahead and configure the zone. And you'll notice that we have the widget zone type. By default, when you leave it as none, this will leave it as a web part zone. We can go ahead and change this to either user personalization, which will allow personalization by a logged in user, or we can restrict personalization to page editors or group administrators. I'm going to select user personalization, and then I'm going to select save and close. Once that's done, you'll notice that it now says user and the name of our zone. From here, we can go ahead, select the menu, and then select add new widget. Within here, we can, we can now go ahead and add any of our existing widgets. So for example, we'll go ahead and add our date time widget. Now that we've gone ahead and created this, let's go ahead out to our live site. We can do this by
by selecting our live site button and you'll notice that this brings me to the date time page that we just created and currently I am logged into the system you'll notice that if I hold my mouse over the date time widget I get an arrow which allows me to add a new widget on our live site or I can go ahead and configure the specific widget that I have selected. This particular widget doesn't expose a lot of properties. It only exposes the widget title and to use server time. Instead of using the widget time, date and time, let's go ahead and change it to just time and then we'll select OK. And you'll notice that I've gone ahead and I've personalized this page. This was a simple example of how widgets can be used to determine the look and feel of your Kentico page.